Hi there, I'm Python trainer Ruven Lerner, and you are watching my Python Standard Library video explainer series. This time we're looking at how we can remove elements from a list. So if I say my list equals a list of range 10 to 100 by 10, so we see here my list, let's say I want to get rid of one of the elements here. And of course, because lists are mutable, we can do that. So I can say my list.pop. And my list.pop does two different things. It removes an element from the list and it returns that element. Now it removes the element from the list. Which element? Well, by default, it removes the item at index minus one, meaning the final one, so 90. And now when I say my list, there we go. We see that 90 has indeed been removed. And if I say my list.pop again, now it's going to return and remove 80. So it'll just keep going down the list there, you know, from the back to the front until all the items are removed. By the way, if I say here, you know, new list equals uh, one, two, three, and I say new list.pop, I say new list.pop, and then new list.pop. All right, so now new list is empty, right? So if I say new list.pop now, it'll give me an error. It'll say, hey, wait a second, pop from empty list. You can't do that. So if we go back to my list here for a moment, we've seen now that pop always removes from the end, but that's if you don't give it an argument. You can remove from anywhere. You can say my list.pop of zero, and that removes and returns the first element. That'll be 10 here. And sure enough, it does that. What if I say my list.pop of three? Yeah, it's going to remove the thing at index three. That was 50. And so sure enough, my list now does this. So if you want to remove by location from within a list, pop is the way to do it. Notice, by the way, that as a general rule, and I mentioned this in my previous video, as a general rule, methods that modify a mutable data type in Python return none. That is not the case for pop, because pop is returning whatever was removed. Um, so you can assign, I mean, you're not going to want to assign the list back to that, but you can assign a variable to that for sure. So that allows you to remove by location. What if, though, we say my list equals list of range 10 to 100 by 10s, and now I want to remove not by location, but by value. So I can say my list dot remove of 50. And what's that going to do? You can see, first of all, this does return none. It doesn't actually uh, return the value that we removed because we know the value that we removed and sure enough now we can see that 50 was removed from there and can I say now my list remove of 60 oh yeah of course I can what if I say and we'll look at my list what if I say now again my list remove of 60 well there is no 60 so I'm going to get an error there value error list remove of x x is not in list meaning it couldn't find 60 in the list there and so it gives us an error what if I say my list equals 10 20 30 10 20 30 10 20 30 and now I say my list dot remove of 20 will that work well the answer is of course my favorite answer yes and no it removes the first element matching this value from the left but it's not going to remove the other one so we still have 20 here and 20 here what if I say my list equals 10 20 30.0 10 20 30 now if I say so we see my list and you can see that here I have a float and here I have an int what if I say now my list remove 30 and now we're going to check and you'll see that it actually removed the first one because it's checking equality I believe it's checking with equal equal and since floats and ints are equal equal if their values are the same even if they're not the same type that's what happens there so if you want to remove by location use pop you want to remove by value, use remove. What if you have a list here, my list equals 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and I just want to clear out the whole thing. I can say my list dot clear, and now my list is an empty list. Now you might think, why would I ever want to do that? Well, watch this. If I say here, x equals 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and then I say x equals, oh, I'm sorry, y equals x. So now x and y are both names pointing to the same list. So if I change x, it'll also change y. So if I say now x uh, equals an empty list, that's fine. X is now an empty list, but y, of course, remains pointing to 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. By contrast, if I say 10, x equals 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and then I say y equals x, and then I say x dot clear, we haven't created a new list object. It's still the same list object which means that x is now empty and y is now empty as well. So if you want to ensure that multiple names that might be pointing to the same list are actually going to be cleared, that's how you can do that. 
All right, so that's how you can remove items from a list using methods. Uh, you can, there's actually one more way you can do it. If I say here, my list equals 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. I can say here, my list, you know that I can change one thing, my list two oops, equals 999, right? So we've changed one. But I can also say my list of one to three equals, and we can say here whatever we want. We can say here, uh, well, I can just give it an empty list. Right? And that's how I can remove items from there. I'm saying I want to get rid of everything starting index 1 up to 9, including index 3. That's going to be two of them, so that's going to be 10 and 20. So I can, of course, then also say my list colon equals empty list, my list. And so far as I know, that's actually the same as running the dot clear method. Um, so you can assign to a slice in a list, and that's another way that you can remove or even add items if you really want. All right, that's it for this time with my Python Standard Library video explainer. Subscribe to get more videos like this, um, and I will be back with more information about the Python Standard Library very soon.